can't buy It resides between my eyes Walk through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a peach If you find the same And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise All right, welcome everyone John Corcoran here and we're about to get started. I'm the host of the Smart Business Revolution podcast, and we're recording this live, but on my podcast, I get to talk with all kinds of interesting CEOs, founders, and entrepreneurs of companies and organizations like YPO, EO, Activation Blizzard, Lending Tree, Open Table, Act Software, and many more. I'm also the co-founder of Rise25, where we connect B2B business owners to their ideal prospects. And I'm here with my co-founder, Dr. Jeremy Weiss. And let me tell you a little bit about Dr. Weiss, for those of you who don't know him, in addition to co-founding and running Rise 25 with I, he's been with, with myself, he's been featuring top entrepreneurs with video interviews since 2010, 2010. And he has featured the founders or CEOs of P90X, Atari, Einstein Bagels, Mattel, Orlando Magic, RX Bars, a few of those companies you've probably heard of before, many more on Inspired Insider. He also was a senior producer for six years at one of the early top business podcasts, helping to put systems in place for them and run some of the behind the scenes operations. And even before we put together the Rise 25 podcast service where we help companies to run and get ROI from their podcast. You know, he would say all the time, you know, every business should have a podcast because hands down is one of the best things that he's ever done in his business and life. He's made best friends, met his business partner, that's me, had countless clients and referral partners True. who come from the relationships that have come from the podcast. And we're going to talk about one element of that here today. So what we're going to talk about here today is the actual outreach, reaching out, particularly to VIPs or influencers. It could be a top client prospect, it could be a, a top referral partner or strategic partner, but we're going to really break down for you the process that you need to follow um, and what elements need to go into that outreach message if you want to be successful about it. And I, I can say that I have featured you know, CEOs of publicly traded companies. I featured billionaires on my podcast and Jeremy absolutely the same as well. So Jeremy, welcome. Thanks for being here. Thanks. You know, the, the most common question we get, I would say, at least I get, is how do you get in touch with these people? How do you, and then when you asked a bunch of people, what are you most interested in having us talk about? They said, how do you cold email VIPs? Right. And so we figured we'd break down the exact process. We would even share exactly what we write on this. Yes. And I've, you know, sent out 11 today. As we're talking, I've sent 11 yeah. of them today um, and they're customized. But, you know, in our lives, we come from the same, um, you know, kind of thought process of how do you give to someone? How do you give to someone as much as humanly possible? So when we're thinking of anything approaching someone, immediately we're thinking of number one, how do you give to that person? And we, the reason for this in part is because, you know, when everyone else is zigging, if you zag, you stand out. And how many times a day do you get an email solicitation or a, a LinkedIn solicitation from someone who just immediately tries selling to you, immediately tries pitching you on something? And it just never will go, it never works well, right? You know, one in a million times does it work well. People do it because they spray and pray and hope it'll work. But if you turn that around and in a manageable way, you lead with a give rather than ask, it's a lot more effective. So that's point number one is uh, reaching out with a give. What do no. you mean by that, Jeremy? I mean, yeah. does that mean like, here, I'm going to send you a box of cookies? What does that mean by, by a give? So we were talking about this and we we reverse engineered when we write and we reach out, what is in that reach out, okay? And the first thing that we talked about was giving. And the giving could be a number of things. In our situation, it's profiling them and their thought leadership and their company and whatever product or service they're working on now on our podcast because you know having a podcast you have a platform that you can give to others right and i should point out that it doesn't have to be with a podcast so you know we both employed this strategy by no it out. does have to be a podcast because we have a podcast <laughs> well, service no i'm just kidding <laughs> i do want to point out that there are yeah. other ways of doing it but we have found over the years that it's not as effective 
for a number of reasons. So, you know, people use this strategy, you know, by featuring people in a book or an article or a video interview or something along those lines. And what we found is that the best combination of speed and um, simplicity is and simpl personal connection. And personal connection is using a podcast. You know, I wrote for Forbes for a number of years, Business Insider. I wrote, I've written for yeah, Entrepreneur. Yeah, you All featured a lot of people in those articles. I did. And what I found was that at the end of the year, really, you know, because of all the work that went into it, I would end up connecting with, you know, a half dozen, 10, 12 people, something like that. You know, writing's versus, difficult. I mean, it is writing difficult. an article is not easy. You crafting those things takes a long time. It takes a lot of time. You know, get to get through the editorial process. You got accepted to larger platforms like that. And what I eventually found is that you could maximize the number of relationships, which is really the the name of the game. If you um, actually were just recording something and you didn't have to spend all that time in the post production process of of writing an article, producing an article, getting it published, getting past the editorial process, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So yeah. the first is give. So and we'll break. Yeah. We'll break down actually our exact emails. But the first one is give. We want to make sure there's a give in that outreach message. Great. So what's the, the second piece? The second is social proof, right? So if anyone is studying direct response marketing, copywriting, that they will pound into your head that they, you have to have social proof elements. And, and we'll what break is, down what, what is social that? proof elements. Social what proof is, elements social could proof? be... Right. Well, you, you did it in the beginning of the interview, right? You say... I've had founders of, you know, CEOs of Activision, Blizzard, LendingTree, OpenTable, like that's social proof because they're saying, oh, John, have you had these other people or Jeremy, you've had the founders of Atari, P90X, RxBar, you had these people, that's complete social proof, right? Um, it, and it's providing, it, it, they're essentially vouching that you or that individual. Yeah. Um, it's validating, is it's validating that you're legit. Yes. Okay. Right. Got it. Got it. So, that proof, you're legit. so how do you do that? If you feel like you don't have any social proof, what is, what is that? Is that like your well, background? That's your a great your question. Work experience? Yeah, we get that a lot. So exactly. So let's say you feel like, well, I've, I'm, let's say something, you know, people say to us all the time, I just started my podcast. I don't have any guests. What do I do? Well, most of the time they have some type of social proof. They have past client, you know, we say past clients, past mm -hmm. people they worked with. Mm -hmm. years of experience in the industry. Like we had, I was talking to someone this morning, they've been in the medical industry for 40 years. Wow. They've had some of the, top, they've, you know, consultant been some of the, some of the, uh, part of some of the top medical schools in the country. And so that is social proof. Wow. I've been in this for 40 years. I've had, you know, uh, basically helped this medical school, this medical school, this medical school, like Naming the medical schools are social proof. The years are social proof. So there's a lot of social proof there. So it's often maybe things that are already in your bio. Like if you're going to read a bio of you, what are the yeah. things that you would recount? If you've written a book, the name of the book, if you've been quoted in certain reputable, well-known publications, you'd maybe do that. Your education, certainly your experience, um, all those sorts of things. Yeah. Yeah. And um, okay. So that's the second piece. So the third piece, what's the third piece? Then? The third piece is what is called the velvet rope and we want to give credit for that so john why don't you talk about oh, the yeah. velvet so, rope yeah <clears throat> so i give credit to michael port who's been a a big mentor and, and a friend he uses this term um in in a number of his books and um what it means is essentially is um you want to make it so that they want to get inside, you know, you think of like a club or something like that it has a velvet rope outside, you know, even if there's no one inside, if there's a velvet rope and two people waiting in line, you like everyone wants to get in. So it's kind of the same thing. So you want to make sure that it's not just that it's open to anyone. We'll just take anyone, but I'm, I want to profile you I want to feature you. And, um, because you're one of the top CMOs in the manufacturing industry in the tri-state area, or because you're one of the top, um, you know, business development executives in the Southern Florida area working in retail today. You know, it's like you, you want them to want to be a part of that community or group of people that you're going to be featuring. Mm -hmm. and, and actually a concept that you use is your idea of a series, not a season, especially when it comes to podcasts. So a lot of times you see podcasts and people do want to do a season 
and there's a big difference between a seri- series and a season. So talk a little bit about that. Yeah. I mean, it's a similar, that's, that is exactly, I would, I didn't realize that's what I was doing at the time, but it is a velvet rope, right? Mm-hmm. So if I did, you know, say I went to University of Wisconsin, Madison, and when I did the top Wisconsin entrepreneur series, um, that was people want to be included in the top Wisconsin entrepreneur series. You know, who doesn't want to be considered a a top founder from your own alma mater? It's like you right. made it, right? And the the thing is, John, I realized that I was going to do the top University of Wisconsin series, but I realized, well, why not just do Wisconsin? Like broaden it, and there's lots of people that mm-hmm. came out of University of Milwaukee, you know, you know, you know University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee, La Crosse. Madison. So I was like, I just made it broader and did a Wisconsin series, but that's mm. the velvet rope. It's a velvet yeah. rope in terms of grouping them into a series. So, right, right. So, um, now did we talk about the, the commonality or the common connection? No. Do we talk about, it? I think we no. kind of skipped so, over that, but that's a, no, that's an important no. one. So the next one will actually with open loop was the next one. So but, it has to have a give, it has to have social proof. You have to have a velvet rope. You don't have to, but it works better. Um, and the open loop. Yeah. So Talk open about loop. You, you do the open yeah. loop. Yeah. So so the open loop is not including all of the information in your initial outreach message so that um, the person wants to, it opens a loop, so to speak, so that they want to close that loop. We naturally have a curiosity towards that. Yeah. So if someone says, I can share more details with you or sa- says like, let me know if that's of interest and I'll, you know, provide for you the additional information that you would need. You know, people naturally are curious. And so what you want to do in an outreach message like this is open that loop. So it's right. naturally invites them to respond. If, if nothing more than to get that additional information. But then what that effectively does is it carries forward the conversation. One, it gets a response yeah. and it gets you into a conversation. And then it's harder for people to say no once they are in that conversation. Yeah. I mean, you know, John, I went down the path and did the top direct response marketing copywriting series, right? And I had some of the pe- best people on the planet. And one of the things they said was there was a story about what's the number one thing that you want to make sure to include in your copy out of anything. Mm-hmm. And there was lots of guesses. Mm-hmm. Um, and and so if you want to find out more, you have to listen to the next episode. No, we could open a loop and just actually yeah. have them watch. But the uh, number one thing was curiosity. The uh, number uh, one thing was curiosity. Uh, Gary Halbert, I think, I don't remember who I was talking to. Maybe it was Caleb O'Dowd or Sam Markowitz, one of the Gary Halbert protégés. And it was a Gary Halbert story. And that's, you know, comes from him. And it was curiosity. So opening a loop creates some curiosity. Right. And right? if you watch any local news, if you listen to um, you know, news radio anytime, they do this every time, right? Right before the commercial yes. break. You know, next, coming up next, have we found the ma- the fountain of youth? Find out. <laughs> we'll be right back, you know, and it's like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna stay for two minutes yeah. to listen to these commercials. So that's yeah. exactly, you know, totally. what's happening there. Um, um, and the next one is what you're referring to. So give social proof, velvet rope, open loop. The next is instant connection. Instant connection. So how do yeah. you form instant connection? And uh, right? I think we were alluding to it earlier. It's with things that you have in common, right? Yeah. I mean, instant connection. So again, like all this is customized. This isn't just templated and you just throw it out to everyone. You really need to customize this, but instant connection you know, if you look at someone's, most of the time, you can look at someone's LinkedIn profile and form some kind of instant connection or their about page. It could be, John, somewhere where they live. It could be a college they went to. It could be a, hey, Michael. Um, it could be, you know, anything that you were, it could be they have four kids. I was reading something, you know, this morning, one of the people I was reaching out to, they wrote an article on like having six kids and running a business. So if I were John and reaching out to the person and go, I'm not as cool as you. I have four kids. You have six kids. And you get this instant connection like we're both entrepreneurs that have a lot of kids. So mm-hmm. there is definitely something you can find in that. And I think you and I kind of hone in on that in the beginning when we're looking at something. How do we form an instant connection with someone? 
Um, it could be places you live, hobbies you have, all those things. Yeah. Right. Yeah. This just happened yesterday. You emailed someone, CC'd me on it. And I looked down at the person's email signature and it said that they were from my hometown, not the one I live in now, but the one I went to high school in. Right. My parents still live there. And um, and I look, I knew the exact address, knew exactly where the building is and everything. And I just mentioned that. I just said, oh, hey, you're right from, I'm, I live right near you, went to the high school close by, you know, because that's an immediate connection. You know, it's immediate. It bonds you. Yeah. Immediate. Right. Um, so any final thoughts, Jeremy? No. So let's go through some actual copy. We okay. have a, we have some different approaches. So we can maybe read um, the actual copy of the email. Um, I know sometime you have a short email that you'll send with the open sure. loop and I then do a that. long email. And yeah. then sometimes, honestly, I just go straight with the long email, which I should probably do more of what you do, which is open a loop. So I'll read my direct, you know, my cold email. And I sent 11 of these today um, and modified them accordingly. So yeah, I'll let you yeah. go with your short and long version. Sure, sure. So I have I have a short version. This is so short that I can use it via text message. I can use it via email. I can use it on a LinkedIn message or however. Um, and often I use it once I have already had an immediate connection with them, but uh, like an, an email exchange or something like that, um, or I'm connected with them on LinkedIn already. Or sometimes I send it cold, so before I've had any real communication with them. So I'll say something just like, the first sentence is just straight into the point. Um, if I have something in common, then it would be something like, hey, by the way, you know, we both went to University of San Francisco or something like that. You know, if we have something in common or, hey, we both did a sentence. Yeah, you want to lead with the instant connection. Right. You know, or, hey, you know, Bill Jones told me that I should reach out and connect with you. He said you guys had a great time last month in Cabo or whatever, you know, something that you have in common. So and then I'll say, I'd love to interview you on my podcast period. I've been podcasting since, in my case, 20, 2010, but you don't have to put that in there if you haven't been doing it for a while. Um, and I've interviewed 400 plus entrepreneurs, business owners, business book authors, including the founders and CEOs of Activision, Blizzard, LendingTree, OpenTable, Act Software, Contactually, and many more. And I can share many, I can share more details, dot, dot, dot. That's intentional, dot, 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 because that is opening the loop right there. Yeah. So it's very the short. Give, the social proof, the velvet rope, the open loop, and the instant connection. Each of the mm -hmm. pieces are there. Right, right. So, um, and then, you know, sometimes people read that and they think, well, I can't do that. That's that's his story. I don't have any of those things. Well, But you just break it down by the different elements that we were talking about there, and you substitute your own social proof. You substitute your own experience or your own commonality, and you can structure an outreach message in the same way you want to share yours so go on do you want to talk, talk, talk about the long one so the longer version then so then when someone responds back and they say um great i'd love to know more details then i send them a longer version and it basically just says here are all the details and then i have multiple different paragraphs so i'll say you know how long i've been podcasting for at this point it's been quite a while it's been about 10 years now but I've been doing this for a number of years. And so I started doing it, you know, previously. Um, and I talk a little bit about what I focus on the podcast, but pretty much this second follow-up message is designed to answer every possible question that that person might have, because I don't want to spend a, a ton of time going back and forth answering questions. So I want to answer all their questions in there. So I give links to past episodes that they can check out. I yeah. give a list list people who've been guests on my podcast. Now that's designed so that when they look over that, when they look over the list of names, they say, wow, how could I possibly say no to this outreach message if all these other people said yes? So um, I also describe what exactly I like to ask about because people frequently want to know, well, what are you going to ask me about? Um, and then I give them a link directly to book a time so that they can go ahead and do it, you know, directly if they want. Or I say they can also message me back if they can't find a time. Um, format, I talk about what the format is, how I record the interviews, how long they're going to last. Um, I ask, I answer, you know, they often ask, you know, do you, do you send me the questions in advance? So I say, no, I don't do that. I don't prescribe them. I keep them casual. Um, and then I give some information about me. So I, I say, you know, by the way, here's some more details about me in case they don't, they don't know much about me. Um, and then finally, composition of my audience. That's another common question that I got. 
um, was who are the types of people that are going to be listening to this. So that's the, the basic breakdown and the follow-up message. Yeah. Cool. Thanks for that. Yeah. And that's a good point. You know, with the second email or with my first email, you want to make sure you answer the most commonly asked questions that they're going to have because those are, uh, you know, objections that they may mm -hmm. have of why not doing it. So I'll, I'll tell you mine. Um, and so my outreach, I, you know, I sent 11 of them today, um, you know, and I customize it. So usually I will look at their LinkedIn profile. I may even look at their about page. And if they're important enough to you, you should do a little bit of research and give some context. So um, I basically will start off saying, you know, I really love what you've done with that this company. And I won't stop there. And I will say something like, I saw that in 2015, you got just 2015 alone, you added 72 staff. And this year you moved into another large facility. So I'll, I'll actually show them I did a little research on them. I'm not just like blanket, you know, uh, messaging them. Um, or here, like you said, the instant connection piece, I may say, you know, John told me that you had an amazing company. And once I looked at it, I saw you did X, Y, Z. So immediately, if they know you, John, they'll be like, oh, cool. Like, I'll read on because I know John, too, or whoever. So there's that instant, you know, connection. The next piece is, like you said, giving some social proof because they're like, OK, cool. We have mutual connections. And then I say with the exact ask, I would love to feature you on my podcast. So you want to be straight into the point so they, they don't have to read three paragraphs deep to know what you're asking. So right is straight to the point. I'd love to have you on my podcast. Now they're thinking, why would I go on your podcast? Right? So now <laughs> you got to provide some social proof and say, I'd love to feature you alongside other founders. I've had the CEOs and founders of P90X, Quest Nutrition, Einstein Bagels, Atari, Mattel, Baby Einstein, Big League Chew. The list goes on. So I say you'll definitely be a good company. And if you haven't had those, like John said before, you could just include whatever social proof elements you have. And then here's where I put out, I will say, check out this link, check out the links in my signature for popular episodes. Like if they're interested, sometimes I will take, so like in my signature, I have the link to the P90X one, the Einstein bagels, the Atari one. But here I may put something really industry specific to them. Like if it's a top SaaS founder and they've heard of, you know, Zapier, I will go, here's the one, I know you're in SaaS. Here's the one I did with, you know, uh, Wade, a uh, founder of Zapier, and I'll put it in there. So someone in their industry. Um, and then I will even borrow credibility. You know, the other thing is we talked about social proof. You could borrow credibility from platforms. So, so we're going to promote the interviews to our email subscribers, social media, iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and many more. And if you have a number around that, which we do, we're going to promote it to over 165,000 of our email subscribers, social media following, you, you know, put that in there. Yeah. Um, and then, then I asked, do the ask again, because I said in the front, I'd love to have you on uh, the podcast. All I want is a yes or no. Like John opens the loop. I just want a yes or no. And then I'll send more details. So I go, would you be up for an interview? Question mark. And then I have parentheses. Some people, you know, now we're not traveling. Some people was like, is this via phone? Are we meeting in person? Like, so I will say it's all done via video conference, you know, conference of the comfort of your own home, close parentheses. And then thanks, Jeremy. And then I have, you know, anyone worth their salt in copywriting has taught me have a PS. So <laughs> of course I have a PS, you know? And so... <laughs> Um, you, whatever you put in the PS, it could be more social proof. It could be another interview link. Um, I put, you know, I've already asked, I just want a yes or no. Like, are you interested or not? Like, would you be up for an interview? That's it. So I'm all I like the for casual yes no. nature of that. Are you up for an interview? It's not yeah. even like committing to like scheduling a time. It's just, yeah, like, are you no open time. to the idea? Yeah, exactly. Know? Which is um, elite, yeah. You know, the, one of one other yeah, thing I was going to mention that I've I've put in some outreach messages, is I'll, or in a follow up, I'll say, you know, if if you look through my past guest list, you'll see I've had a very impressive list of CEOs, founders, entrepreneurs, that sort of thing. In many cases, after I've conducted the interview, I know more about you, and I've been able to make great introductions between my guests, introducing some 
of, um, you know, my guests to other prior guests, which have led to all kinds of different things from people starting businesses together to strategic partnerships, referral arrangements, great collaborations, that sort of thing. Yeah. So you can take a look at my past guest list and there may be someone that I may be able to introduce you to. So that's, that's a great thing to lead with actually, because that's another give besides being yeah. on the podcast. It's like, I'm going to, and you and I both make maybe 10 to 20 introductions every day. So I should probably put that in my outreach message. Yeah, right. So I actually don't change, have it in I'm my gonna, outreach, but I should add that. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to change that and yeah. put a PPS. PPS. Yeah. There you go. And I'm um, because of this conversation. So that's great. Look, you uh, learned something new. Uh, so what? Uh, any final thoughts? I just thoughts? added it. Any final um, thoughts, Jeremy, on this? No. Um, and I guess in the PS, I will, if they want to make it super easy, I will sometimes include you know, maybe here, I, you know, send me your schedule to make it super convenient or throw out a few times or here's my schedule type of thing. So um, I think that's it. I think that about sums it up, you know, make sure to include those elements of mm -hmm. give, mm -hmm. social proof, velvet rope, open loop, instant connection. Well, that was great. Uh, Dr. Weiss, remind everyone where they can connect with you and learn more about yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, they could go to Rise25. And when I tell people to go to Rise25, watch the video. John, people say we're like an old married couple bantering <laughs> on the opening video. Um, it's there. like a nine or 10 minute video there. It's kind of funny. Uh, you and I uh, talking about some of the strategies that we're talking about. Yeah, here as well. we talk about some of the strategies. And, you know, since I think, you know, John, I can actually um, share my screen. So I'm going to do that and I'll show you. So this um, video here is we, we actually were running the podcast, official podcast of a a large 17,000 person conference. And we talk about some of the principles of podcasting and how do you get ROI from podcasting. Right. All right. So thanks everyone. We'll talk again soon. Bye-bye. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walk through the fire. Came out better on the other side. See, life's like a beach if you find the same right now. I feel like a hundred grand